Okay, so in transcription, the basic concept um, is that we're just trying to transcribe DNA from our gene into mRNA code. So here we have a gene um, in black. This is our DNA, double helix. I'll explain why it's opened up in just a moment. Um, uh, and the only thing is it's just a lot shorter than normal, right? So in reality, genes will be hundreds or even thousands of base pairs long, um, just so we can fit it on the screen. We've only got you know 15 or so here. Um, we have an enzyme called RNA polymerase. That's going to be this little guy over here. Um, and that will be the enzyme that does all of the work of transcribing our DNA code into mRNA code. Uh, the gene is then broken up into, you can see, three different regions. So we have the promoter region in red, the coding region in the middle, and then the stop region at the end. Um, the promoter region is where RNA polymerase will bind um, and the coding region uh, is where it'll read the DNA and code this into complementary RNA. Uh, and then the stop region is where well, everything stops, right? So we can use this um, setup to kind of help us break down the process of transcription into three steps. So initiation, elongation and termination. So first in initiation, um, the RNA polymerase or RNAP here uh, binds to the promoter region, just like this on the gene. Um, but you'll notice that it only binds to one side of the DNA double helix, and that is on the three prime end. So remember that three prime is the end that has the free uh, deoxyribose in the case of DNA. Five prime is where you have the free phosphate group. Uh, this will then cause the DNA to actually unwind, as it's shown here, into what's called a transcription bubble, right? Um, and so it'll open up this bubble so that the enzyme can access the nucleotides on this lower strand here, which we'll call the template strand. Um, and then it'll basically read along one side, so it'll run along from three to five, it'll run along the template strand, um, reading it and laying down complementary base pairs. So if we think about what that would be, you can see the promoter region won't actually get coded. So it'll bind here, but it'll start moving this way. And you can see when it gets to this region here, it'll see a C and it'll go, okay, I'll lay down a complementary G RNA nucleotide. It then hits a T, so it puts down an A, and it hits a T again, and let's move it along here. So move it along. Let's say it's, it's all the way down here, right? Um, and it's leaving behind this RNA molecule that's bound temporarily to the DNA. So we've got A again, and then here's where it'll want to put down a T, but remember that we have uracil instead of T, thiamine in uh, mRNA, and then here it'll just keep going, and it'll lay down that code, that molecule behind it, like a tail, like that. It'll make its way all the way to the end. Uh, let me just make sure I get that right. It'll make sure that it keeps going all the way. And when it finally gets to the stop region, this is where then it'll be told to basically just jump off. So it'll remove itself from there. Um, what will also happen is the mRNA molecule, of course, this is not complete here. It would end up looking like this. So this would have been bound. Um, and then that will also jump off. You'll now have a free mRNA. We can then get rid of all of this here because that would have jumped off and the DNA would then rehybridize and the transcription bubble would close. Uh, and then finally, just remember that this is a dynamic process, right? So for drawing's purpose, we've got it all opened up in one big chunk, but in reality, as the RNA polymerase actually runs along the sequence, it'll actually start opening the bubble just before it and the bubble will start actually closing and the mRNA will start detaching as it's passed, right? Um, and so this is what we mean by a dynamic process. It kind of does it all in once. Um, and so I'll leave here a little demonstration that I shot yesterday uh, that shows this, just using the seal out of a resealable sandwich bag. And so that's it. Um, RNA polymerase binds and opens the transcription bubble. Then we have elongation. It reads the template strand in three prime to five prime direction and makes a complementary mRNA strand. Termination, it drops off um, and everything returns as it was. And then finally, you'll notice that uh, the mRNA is actually identical in sequence to this other section of DNA, the non-template strand. It runs GAA and you can see GAA.
It just has U's instead of T's. And so this we call the coding strand.